Okay. Good morning. Uh, I'm Sister Pam Beal, and I'm here today with Bishop Daniel Felton. Bishop Daniel Felton is the Bishop of Duluth, Minnesota, and I've invited him to join me to this interview as part of our celebration of National Vocation Awareness Week. This is an annual week uh, long celebration in the Catholic Church that's dedicated to promoting vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life through prayer and education. It's also a time for us to renew our prayers and support for those who are considering one of these particular vocations. So as we begin today, Bishop Daniel, I'm wondering if you could share with us um, how, what did you dream of becoming when you grew up? Uh, did you wanna be a fireman or a truck driver or did you always want to become a priest? Well, it's great, uh, great to be with you. And you know, as I reflect on that question, I believe there's always been a prompting within me uh, to wanna to be a priest. Uh, not a bishop necessarily, that just is another movement of the spirit. But um, I remember as a child growing up thinking about that possibility, um, the classic uh, playing mass when I was a child wearing yeah. my, you know, uh, sisters having to participate in the mass as I was having it. Um, I grew up in a parish, uh, which was somewhat rural. Uh, but the pastor, uh, Father Nicholas Gross, was the pastor of the parish for 49 years. Wow. So the stability of that and just the familiarity also with knowing the home parish pastor, I'm sure, played a part in that. Um, out of high school, I went right into the seminary, um, at least uh, some kind of formation um, in the Diocese of Green Bay, attending St. Norbert College, but being part of the seminary program and then off to Collegeville. During that period of time, I did have some thoughts, though, about uh, being a psychologist, mm -hmm. um, and so also had thought about that and even kind of pursued that as a possibility. Kind of went to the seminary in my first year uh, at St. John in Collegeville with an attitude of, I'll go there to prove this is not what I want to do, um, but that I want to be a psychologist. Uh, but in that, in that movement and in that moment, ultimately came to this discernment. So very uh, fortunate to have had an upbringing where I was surrounded um, by a lot of uh, sisters and priests um, and in a family that didn't advocate for me being a priest, but certainly practiced our faith. So yeah, uh, short answer to your question would be kind of had those promptings um, from the very beginning of, the, of life. Yeah. Did, you, did you think about it as God calling you or was it just something that was just was part of your life as you as you I lived? think that the God calling part of it became more relevant, but also more to the forefront as I moved through high school into college because people were using that language. Mm -hmm. So they were saying, oh, this may be a vocation. And remember, vocation is a Latin word, which means calling. So I think the promptings were there, a better a stirring of the spirit that probably didn't have words as much as it was a spirited sense of this is what I was being called to. But then as I grew older and as I began to have conversations about this with other people, they began to provide me with some of the language vocabulary to describe that sense that I had. And, and so you talked about sisters and priests that kind of surrounded you as you grew up. Um, so have they, how, how has your support system helped you in your vocation as you have grown? Well, I, I mean, again, I was very fortunate um, in that um, when I attended grade school, uh, your order, the Manitowoc Franciscans uh, were there, um, greatly influencing my life. As I mentioned to you, a pastor there for 49 years and the pastors after that having a great impact. When I was at St. Norbert College, um, in a seminary program, but going through uh, the college studies program, I also coached at what used to be Oneida Seminary for the Diocese of Green Bay, ultimately became a high school. But at that time, uh, there were enough priests that there were seven priests actually on the faculty at the high school. Um, what I didn't know at that time is that these were exceptional priests. Um, and certainly had a great influence on my confirming um, that this was a calling and kind of showed me what that calling might look like. 
uh, in and through their own persons. So I've always been very fortunate uh, before ordination and after ordination to have a number of men and women, religious and priests around me, inspiring me and confirming uh, the call. That's great. Any doubts in all of the, during that time, you know, that maybe this wasn't what God was calling you to do? I think that the doubt was, uh, and I somewhat addressed that before, that maybe I was called to be a psychologist. Okay. And I had a great interest in that area as well and kind of went to the major seminary at St. John with the attitude, I'm going to show God this isn't what he's calling me to. Um, and so during that period of time, so I, I would say there were guys that came into the seminary uh, as can as well be the case with women into religious life and so forth. They come in and this is what I'm going to do, period. Mm -hmm. And just show me what I got to do because this is what I'm going to do. I think I came in more with the attitude, perhaps reflecting some others as well, of I'm going to use this time to kind of prove to myself or somehow confirm in a deeper way this is what I really am called to. And it's just not going to be an automatic show me you know what i got to do and then show me the door so that i can get out of here and become that which i want to be it was more questioning that asking questions about that but through all of that ultimately coming to the same conclusion yes this this was my call oh that's great so so what do you love most about being a priest um, i think what I, I love most about being a priest um, and certainly uh, even now as a bishop okay. is the ability to enter into people's lives in ways that in, in customary relationships might take years to do that mm -hmm. you know so our blessing also has become our shadow so the blessing is people will trust us as a pastor as a priest um, and allow us to enter into deep moments of their very person or of their lives or their lives of their family um, and the the richness of those relationships obviously being a key component not only to my ministry or our ministry but also to to what i love most um, the shadow side of that is that's how deeply we can also hurt people yeah. um, when we misuse that trust mm -hmm. but one of the elements of being a bishop that i enjoy is it's kind of have being a pastor but with a bigger parish <laughs> so i've been out and about uh, this last year and i try to get out as much as i can just to be with parishioners to be with our priests and all the folks out there and that's when I feel most comfortable in that space of who and who I am but it's also when I feel most enriched you know by that experience and as a bishop there are many ways to do that uh, albeit a little bit different than how I did that in a parish mm -hmm. so um, if that's what you love then there's always a the other side of what's the hardest part what's the part you maybe don't get up in the morning and are excited about doing as a priest, as a bishop? Well, I think when you love people and being with people, you have to also love the fact that as people, we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times in part of my ministry, personally in my own life, but I guess in the life of a priest or a bishop is, you know, the many issues and problems and situations that people can get themselves into and a lot of my time as a pastor a lot of time as my bishop is just trying to put people back in a right relationship with god and with each other mm -hmm. and that can be very difficult mm -hmm. and you know sometimes um, that can be very painful not only for the people that are involved but for me as a pastor or as a bishop and so as my dad who loved his job um, used to say it involved people though that you know, his job would be so easy if it wasn't for people. <laughs> um, and as much as he loved it, kind of as a bishop, it's it's mine. So what do I love the most? People. Mm -hmm. But my job would be a lot easier if it wasn't for people. <laughs> How true. Um, so one last question, um, Bishop Daniel, before um, we close today. What advice would you give to a young person who is um, sitting there today discerning their vocation? You know, I think that the advice that I would give is first to believe that you have a vocation. Um, it's hard for us to believe that God created us in such a way that God has given us a God mission and a God purpose in life. Um, and we've had that from the day that we were born and it's been in the mind of God for all time. Um, and yet many times we think we're not worthy of that or many times we might think 
that it's really not that at all. Or there are times when I think about what's my mission or my purpose in life, and that's the wrong question. The question is, what is God's purpose for me? What is God's mission for me? And if it's God's purpose and mission for me, then God has given us all of the gifts and talents and blessings that we need to fulfill that mission and that purpose. And so to believe, first of all, that I do have a purpose and a mission, that I do have a vocation, to believe that one of the ways that God discloses that to me is through the blessings and gifts and talents that I've been given, you know, that God would never give me a vocation in life or a mission or a purpose in life and keep it a secret. Um, that ultimately God is trying to communicate to us all the time what's the God purpose and God mission that he has created us for um, and sincerely wants us to fulfill. And that ultimately a disclosure then of what that purpose and mission might be, what that vocational call might be in life, uh, hopefully to the priesthood or women religious, men religious, uh, to be a deacon, all of the various forms and vocations that we have across the board, that ultimately in that call and in that discernment of call, it's gonna lead us to a meaning that matters. It's going to lead us to a sense of fulfillment. It's going to lead us to some kind of embrace of joy. And if in that moment and feeling some fulfillment, if I'm feeling some joy, if I'm feeling you know, some sense of happiness, um, that probably uh, is the moment that God is disclosing to me, what is the God purpose for me? So just to remain open, uh, ultimately, the discernment of our spirit and our vocation has nothing to do with you and me. It has everything to do with God mm -hmm. and with what God wants to do in and through me and through all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much for just taking some time today to share your insights into your own vocation with all of us. And thank you most of all for all you do in serving God and his people um, in so many ways every day um, as priest and also as bishop. It's really been a pleasure to meet with you today, even if it's only on Zoom. So thank you again, Bishop Daniel, and may God continue to bless you and energize that good work that he is going doing through you every day. And I thank all of you who took time to watch this interview today. And I hope that you will continue to pray for vocations to the priesthood and diaconate and consecrated life, not only during this National Vocation Awareness Week, but every day of the year. Thank you very much for being here.